What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG, a.k.a. Wallabies, is here with Igby. Y'all never get to see Igby. He's a cat that we still have, and we love him very much. He's a sweet bubby. Anyway, today we're taking another dive into the world of Commander so we can look at one of my favorite legends, period, of all time. Marieki Rai Barrett. 25 years in the game. I still don't actually know how to pronounce this card's name, but we just call her the Notorious MRB, or Bloody Mary. She's got a lot of AKAs around here, and I've loved this card since I was like 11 years old. I've still got the same copy that I had in 1996. I, I just love this card so much, and it's a shame that she doesn't get the kind of attention that she really deserves in Commander Circles. So today, we're going to try to change that. Yo, I'm sort of do some heinous haters like a poopa scoopa. I'm just trying to take my life like a Koopa Troopa. I'm double Mario. That mean I'm super super. And I'm freaking dangerous like a Chupa Chupa Cabre. Got them all day like a Kanye, but I'm way better. Getting cheddar and Monterey. But Jack, you don't know, man. You got the show, man. You want roast beef? Well, I'm Arby's. Well, let's start things off by taking a close look at our commander here and talking about what makes her so unique and powerful. First of all, she only costs three mana to get on the battlefield in the first place. Pretty good deal. And she puts you in three very powerful color options. Once you do get her on the table, she doesn't untap during your untap step, but when you do elect to tap her, you can gain control of any creature on the entire battlefield. Now, you lose control of that creature if you lose control of Mariki Re Barrett, but that's misleading. That's only if you literally lose control of her and another player takes control of her, because if she leaves the battlefield for any reason or becomes untapped, then you bury the creature, which is just old school magic speak for destroy the creature and it can't be regenerated. This ability is worded in a very specific way that basically allows us to tap and then untap or flicker Mareki to basically destroy target creatures. So if we can flicker her or untap her and then tap her again multiple times in a turn, then we can just destroy multiple creatures on the battlefield every single turn and then save the juiciest ones for ourselves. You know, we can keep the last creature that we use Mareki's ability on and actually steal it, leave it on the battlefield and leave Mareki tapped if that's what we want to do. Now, the way this ability is worded allows for a lot of different angles of attack and a lot of different ways to build the deck around her, but today we're mostly going to focus on tapping and then untapping Mariaki multiple times in the same turn to eliminate specific threats that are dangerous to us at the time, building towards multiple combos that can allow us to steal every creature on the board in the same turn. We do have ways of blinking and flickering Mariaki in the deck that are very important, but again, we're mostly focused on tapping and then untapping her multiple times, and we've got a lot of different ways of doing that. A pair of auras that are incredibly powerful when stuck to her Marieki are Freed from the Real and Pemin's Aura. Pemin's Aura will give us a form of Hexproof, which is really important to have on Marieki, but both of these will allow us to tap and then untap her as many times as we have mana to do that. So these are effectively self-contained combos that allow us to steal multiple creatures in one turn. Easily one of the most important cards in this tap and untap stuff subcategory is Thornbite Staff because, again, it's a self-contained combo that'll allow you to untap Marieki multiple times in the same turn, and you don't even necessarily have to kill the creature that she's stolen or anything. You can just sacrifice a creature, point creature removal at something else, that'll untap the Marieki. So Thornbite Staff will lead to a lot of turns where you're able to steal multiple creatures as well. But so will cards like Crab Umbra and Umbral Mantle, very similar in terms of the name of the card, and similar in terms of effect, too. Both of these effectively allow you to just pump three mana into the creature that they're on. Always going to be Marieki. Not always, actually. Let me take that back. We'll get to some other creatures we can tap for value later. But in any case, these can just untap the creature that they're on for three total mana. So even though they're not as good as cards like Freed from the Real or Pim and Zara, they still allow us to tap and untap a creature as many times as we have mana for. And in this deck, that's a very powerful effect. Speaking of powerful effects, we're also playing a copy of Mind Over Matter in our Commander deck, and even though this is the single most expensive card in the list at about $17 on TCG Player, there actually are multiple copies available at about $12 if you don't mind a moderately played copy, and I sure don't, so <laughs> keep that in mind. But even at about 12 bucks, this would be the most expensive card in the deck because I've tried to keep the budget manageable. But that said, I still believe in the effect enough that I feel like we absolutely have to play it in the deck. There are multiple infinite game-winning combos with this. For instance, if you have a Marieki out and a Mind Over Matter, all you have to do is get a Midnight Reaper or a Grim Horror Specs, both of which we're playing, and you can effectively go infinite because you'll 
discard a card to mind ever matter to untap your Marieki. That'll kill whatever creature you've stolen. You'll draw a card with your Midnight Reaper, your Grim Horror Specs. That allows you to discard a card again to mind over matter to untap your Marieki. So you can effectively steal every single creature on the battlefield in one turn with mind over matter. So long as you have, again, one of these creatures that draws you cards whenever creatures die. So that's just too powerful of a combo to ignore. And to my mind, we have to play Mom. But speaking of crazy combos, now I get to talk about a Fedo Alchemist and Norit. Yay! We get to play Norit, another card I've loved since I was 11, mostly because of the artwork. I find it very charming, but turns out the card is actually great in this deck along with Alchemist because they allow us to untap Marieki for free. We're playing a bunch of creatures and effects that untap Marieki, but very few of them allowed us to do so at no cost. So if you throw like an Illusionist Bracers on your Norit or on your Afeto Alchemist, then you can just, again, steal nearly every creature on the battlefield all at one time. So Illusionist Bracers is especially good with either of these two creatures, but there's plenty of creatures in the deck that a Bracers could work on to make sure you can untap Marieki multiple times over a given turn. Let's go over some of those real quick because we're playing more than a few of them, let's say. We're playing a Puppeteer in the deck, along with the Niblis of the Breath, a flying threat that allows us to untap stuff. A Vizier of Tumbling Sands, which we can cycle for this effect some of the time if we want to. We've also got a Captain of the Mist, which can untap permanence, along with a Fate Stitcher, which can also untap permanence, which is sometimes really important. Also note... With Captain of the Mist, we're playing a few humans in the deck, not too many, but there are some turns where you can orchestrate being able to, you know, untap multiple times uh, Marieki over the course of one turn because you can play multiple humans over the course of a turn. So that's pretty cool. But as far as Fate Stitcher goes, there are times where you can activate Fate Stitcher, untap Marieki, and then sacrifice Fate Stitcher, unearth it in the same turn so you get another activation with it. And another important play pattern to note. There's also a Tide Force Elemental in the deck, which will again lead to multiple activations on some turns. So that can be really, really cool. But there's a lot of non-creature stuff in the deck too that untaps Marieki and other creatures for us, like Unbender Time, which can untap any permanent. Again, an important thing to be able to do some of the time in this deck. So definitely play that. Even though the cost is a little bit steep, it's still more than worth it in the long run. There's also a Mage Ride Stone and a Thousand Year Elixir, which can effectively just give Marieki haste, which is really cool to have multiple effects that can do that because we're also playing a swift foot boots might as well go ahead and tell you about that you should play swift foot boots and commander now that's all the stuff that untaps stuff it's close to 20 cards but there are plenty of other powerful important effects that we're playing in this deck so before i get to the mana artifacts and the other utility cards like removal and whatnot that we're playing let me go over some of the other most important pieces in the deck starting with dead eye navigator and conjurer's closet now these are both ways to blink creatures but again note the way that both of these are very specifically worded so that you can blink the creature that you stole but it still comes back into play on your side of the table and under your control, no longer attached to Marieki in any kind of way. So those can be very important effects. Note too that you can obviously bond Marieki to Deadeye Navigator over and over to steal multiple creatures in a turn so long as you have the mana to do so. So there's so many things you can do with Deadeye Navigator in the deck. But again, Conjurer's Closet too is an important piece along those same lines that allow us to blink either Marieki to effectively untap her and destroy whatever creature she's bonded to at the moment. Or we can just blink the creature that we stole and keep it forever. Both of those are very powerful things to be able to do. Now, a lot of the other important pieces in this deck are other creatures that tap for value. Again, we've got like 18 or so different cards that untap stuff in this deck, so we want to make sure that Marieki isn't the only thing we have the option to untap at any given point, so there are a lot of creatures that are integral to this part of the strategy. There are things like, <laughs> I say integral? That's a car. Um, in integral to this part of the strategy. There's also Avatar of Woe, which can just tap to destroy creatures straight up. Archivist, which can tap to draw cards. Very important to be able to tap and untap this if you're looking for specific pieces. And then there's obviously Arcanus the Omnipotent, which can tap to draw three cards, which is incredibly crazy to be able to untap and then tap again in the same turn multiple times. But maybe one of the most important of these is Adarkar Valkyrie, or Adarkar Valkyrie, however you pronounce it, because I've been playing Magic forever and I've seen this name pronounced a million different ways. But anyway, Valkyrie allows us to, again, have another effect that allows us to keep the creature that we stole forever. And it's something sweet to tap and untap as well. And it's a big flying creature too with a nice body, so there's that. 
Now, there are a ton of other marquee creatures in the deck, like Coffin Queen. Lots of tapping and untapping shenanigans you can do with Coffin Queen, but I like reanimate effects in this deck because we're going to be killing so many of our opponent's creatures over the course of a couple of turns, and sometimes we might want them back. So stuff like Coffin Queen is really, really sweet because you can just steal creatures that you've killed out of your opponent's graveyard. And again, there are plenty of tap and untap shenanigans you can play with with Coffin Queen. Matter of fact, while we're in the reanimation category, I might as well go ahead and show you the copy of Animate Dead and the copy of Beacon of Unrest that I've been playing in this deck. Beacon is just unbelievable, but Animate Dead is just about the cheapest way you can get this effect. And again, we're going to be killing a bunch of creatures over the course of a game, so having these various reanimation effects is really important. And sort of along those same lines, if you squint, I'm playing a copy of Lazab Demir Mastermind and a copy of Demir Doppelganger. Both of these two can just copy creatures that we've stolen or creatures that are in graveyards, depending on which one that you're playing. So there are a lot of reasons to play both of these cards, and I'm surprised that I don't see Lazab in more of these. Speaking of copying stuff, I'm also playing a Spark Double because this is a blue commander deck, so... I'm playing Spark Double, you know, having two Mariekis out is the only thing better than having one Mariekki out, so we'll do that. Plus, this can copy stuff like Adakar Valkyrie, Avatar of Woe, you know, even Arcanus. So there's, there's all kinds of stuff that we can do with Spark Double in this deck, but as far as the, you know, important cards that don't really fit into a good category on their own, I'm also playing a copy of Fool's Demise here. A Fool's Demise is a dream for this deck because yet another thing here that allows us to steal creatures kill them when Mariecki untaps, and then just keep them forever, and then Fool's Demise comes back to our hands. <laughs> again, however many times we have mana for, we can play this on stuff that we've stolen, and then again, just keep it forever. There's a couple of cards in this kind of like, unique cards that don't fit in a category category. There's Agent of Treachery and Helm of the Host. Again, Helm of the Host, because this is a commander deck, so it's... I feel like I'm just going to shoehorn Helm of the Host into like literally every commander deck that I ever build. So it doesn't really need much introduction. It's a really stupid card, so Helm of the Host. But Agent of Treachery, this is great with stuff like Deadeye Navigator, for instance, or Conjurer's Closet that allows us to blink creatures. Because just blinking an Agent of Treachery is a very, very broken thing to be able to do. Plus, Mariecki can only like steal creatures. And it's really nice to have something that can steal like anything at all. And then we can just blink it with Deadeye Navigator over and over and just end the game. Now, another category I want to kind of highlight here is our Aristocrats suite of cards, kind of. You know, I've already brought up Midnight Reaper and Grim Horror Specs. Allow us to draw cards whenever we untap our Mariecki, the creature that we've stolen, dies. That's really sweet, but since the creature that we've stolen is going to die a lot, uh, th I feel like that's going to happen a bunch of times in the game. <laughs> Usually bears out. We're playing a bunch of stuff that activates or triggers whenever creatures die. So, with that in mind, we've also got a Blood Artist and a Zulaport Cutthroat to deal damage and gain us a little bit of life in some cases um, when creatures die, so that's really important. But there's also an Open the Graves to fill our battlefield whenever creatures die, so that's really important. There's also an Ashnod's Altar in here so that we can sacrifice creatures, often stuff that we've stolen to get a little bit more mana, that's always cool. And a Pitiless Plunderer to kind of round off this category so that whenever creatures die that we've stolen, we get mana off of it too. Now speaking of mana, let me go over all the various rocks that we're playing in this deck, starting with the copy of Soul Ring. It's a commander deck, play, play Soul Ring. There's also an Azorius Signet, a Demir Signet, and an Orzov Signet in the deck. The price differences between these are weird. Orzov Signet's only 50 cents. That's sad. <laughs> the other two are a buck 50, which makes makes plenty of sense as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, play all your various Signets in the deck. Plus a Commander Spear. This is a great rock that also allows us to draw cards later on. And then I filled it out here with a Felwar Stone, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do. There's all kinds of two mana rocks that you could play in this slot. You could play a three mana rock if you wanted to, like Chromatic Lantern. Or you can play Gilded Lotus because there are a bunch of things in this deck that untap permanence and allow you to generate, you know, just extra free mana with a Gilded Lotus. So you could play that if you wanted to, but given the option, I'll almost always opt for Felwar Stone because I have a special place in my heart for it. Let's round things off with some utility cards that we're going to play in the deck. Mostly removal, card draw, counter spells, stuff like that. Just all the things that round out a basic commander deck. In terms of card selection and advantage, we're playing a copy of Brainstorm, a copy of Impulse, and a copy of Lim Duel's Vault here. Just to get started, Lim Duel's Vault is not expensive, but it's the most expensive of these. But it's just maybe one of the best card selection pieces that's ever been printed. So play a copy of that. And I shouldn't really have to explain Impulse and Brainstorm either. These are very cheap, very effective pieces 
pieces of card selection and card advantage. So do that, but also play a Diabolic Tutor. This could easily be any number of tutors that cost like $20, $30, $40, but Diabolic Tutor is like $0.20. Cents. So I'm going to play that card in my deck. Along with Swords to Plowshares, a Mortify, an Utter End. Play these because they're just basically good removal pieces. I like that Mortify allows us to get rid of enchantments. Utter End allows us to get rid of anything. Along with the Anguished Unmaking in the deck and the D-Spark, these also allow us to take out multiple kinds of permanent types that we're not able to, to snipe with Marieki Marie Barrett. So that's important too. Having access to things that destroy multiple permanent types is very important in any commander deck, but especially this one where we've got creatures covered, but we need stuff like Utter End and Anguished Unmaking and D-Spark for that matter to clean up some other permanent types. There's also Oblivion Ring to do that as well, just finishing off the removal here. Onion Rings are always good. But there's also a suite of counter spells in the deck. We've got a Negate, a Dovin's Veto, an Absorb, and just a regular old counter spell in here to make sure that we can protect our Mariaki and make sure, too, that our combos go off the way we want them to and we don't get disrupted. Now here's our mana base. We're playing 37 total lands in this deck, and there's really not much to talk about in terms of these lands. I was mostly looking for dual lands that are very cheap to play. We got that in the Guild Gates. We got that in all of these various life gain lands. We're even playing a Temple of Silence. It's only a couple of bucks to play that. Now the other on color, you know, allied color temples are like five bucks right now, but they'll probably go down when the Theros set comes out because I'm sure to be in that set. So keep that in mind. But you know, we got a lot of the Guild Gates, life gain lands, and stuff like that along with. Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds to find basic lands and stuff. We've got um, Arcane Sanctum in there to produce all three colors of mana along with Command Tower. I mean, this is a pretty cut and dried mana base here without too many surprises, but there are little things in here. You know, stuff like Arcane Lighthouse, which effectively allows us to steal hexproof creatures. That can be really important. Reliquary Tower to make sure that we don't have any maximum hand size. Most commander decks should play this, but especially this deck where it doesn't look like we have many ways to draw cards, but if you have a Horror Specs or a Midnight Reaper out, your hand can get fat really quick. So again, there's really not much to say about this mana base. I was just trying to keep it as budget as possible while also making sure that we make all the colors as appropriately. Hey, we're back. Here are your power rankings right here. Final score of 65 and pretty respectable numbers in most of the categories. Even politics. You wouldn't think <laughs> this is a very good deck to play politics with, but we've got plenty of ways to untap other people's permanence so like we can untap your creature to let you block that thing that you're getting you know attacked by so that's that's pretty cool or maybe we can untap one of your artifacts that has an activated ability let you do that thing again so like we can play politics a little bit in the deck but for the most part we have a giant freaking target on our back also kind of takes us a while to get set up, as represented in this relatively low speed score here, but as the resiliency score would denote, we, once we do get our stuff into place, <laughs> we've just got multiple like game-ending combos that'll just steal everyone's creatures, kill everything on the battlefield all at once. So Again, once we do get set up, we've got this ridiculous game plan that's hard for a lot of people to really keep up with, but again, it takes some time to actually get there. Luckily, we've got some pretty good defense to make sure that we do get to that point in the game, and in terms of the budget, get into that real quick. This is actually a relatively cheap deck, especially for the Commander format. This thing is only about $150. I tried to make it as budget as possible, and there are plenty of things you could put in the deck. You may have noticed that Rings of Brighthearth wasn't in the deck, and it's like a shoe-in for the deck. Staff of Dominance is another good call. Even... If you wanted to, you could do some stuff with Isochron Scepter. You know, I didn't include any of these, like, two-minute instants that untap one or more of your permanents. And that's because I think there's a really low impact if you're not playing Isochron Scepter. So you, you could do that plan if you wanted to. And there's plenty of other stuff. Enlightened Tutor, Mystical Tutor are good cards for this deck, but they're really expensive. Demonic Tutor, same thing. So there are lots of ways you could zhuzh up this list. But as it stands, it's only about $150. And most of the decks on EDH Rec that are, you know, Mariaki Rebarret decks, are in the, you know, four to $600 range. So 150 bucks is a really good price for a deck that still works perfectly fine and has multiple combos in it that'll just, like, make you laugh maniacally when you actually do pull them off. That's all I got for this one. I hope you enjoyed it because, like, I've really enjoyed doing these Commander deck decks lately. <laughs> Probably going to do some more Commander as we get into the new year, but do let me know in the comments section if that's the kind of thing you want. If you want Commander content, I am more than happy to bring it to you because Commander is it's so fun. <laughs> but anyway, and there's so much to talk about when it comes to Commander. It's just, 
Man, if you like building decks, Commander is, <laughs> Commander is the format. Singleton formats are the formats if you enjoy building decks. It's just such an, an interesting challenge, and it's something I haven't really exposed myself to enough, so I've really enjoyed kind of deep diving into the Commander and EDH realm the last couple of times I've done it, and I'm going to do it more often. But again, especially let me know if you want more of that content and any Commanders that you want to see me cover. So aside from that, I guess just like the video, do the YouTube stuff, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, give me to 100 120k i really really want to get there aside from that make sure that you are subscribed because there's going to be like theros spoilers really soon i have to do another spoiler video like tomorrow so <laughs> there's going to be more theros spoilers you want to like make sure you know when i put those out all that so do that stuff hit up the patreon link and if you want this deck list make sure you check the first link in the description go over to tcg player get it at the lowest prices on the whole internet you know they got really good prices over there so if you're interested in the deck whatsoever and you need some pieces for it click that link in the description and help you do it out by going over there but aside from that the patreon follow me on twitter sbmtg you know dev that's that's my name sbmtg dev not sbmtg you know dev but anyway do all the youtube stuff call to action over i guess i have to chill i apologize but i guess i'm done so again just let me know what commanders you want to see down there in the comments section and i will catch you cats later i'm dev from the place thanks for watching my wizards spread love and be kind mm -hmm.